Okay, g'day all, welcome to another video. So it's been a long time. Uh, I thought I might start out with something fairly simple. So we'll continue talking about the basic uh, assembly instructions and today we'll be looking at the Boolean instructions. Uh, at the end, we'll go through something a little bit more interesting. So if you already know all of the uh, basics to Boolean algebra and that sort of stuff, just stick around and at the end, we'll have a look at something which is hopefully slightly more interesting anyway. <laughs> in C++ here, my uh, front end in C++ has just got this little function just here called print binary and all it does is prints out the first 16 bits of an integer. Uh, test function just here is what we're going to write in assembly. And down here in main, all I'm doing is calling that test function and printing out the binary. And we come over here to assembly. Alrighty, so the instructions that we'll be looking at today are and, or, and not, mostly. Uh, we're also going to look at XOR and some other interesting things after that. But and, or, and not are the original Boolean instructions. So George Boole is an English mathematician. He came up with a logical algebra and it's called Boolean algebra after uh, Mr. George. Um, okay, so they each take two parameters and all that's gonna happen is the Boolean operation is gonna be performed between all of the bits of the first and second operands and then the result is gonna be stored in the first operand. Yeah, so it's something like this. I should have written this somewhere. Uh, dest and source. Yeah, so dest and source are gonna be anded together and the result is gonna be stored in dest. Uh, not is a little bit different. Not just flips the bits and stores the results in the same operand. Yeah, but that's generally what's happening. The truth table just lists all of the possible inputs over one side, so A and B, and then it lists the output that that would give. If A and B are both zero, Boolean AND is gonna return zero. If A and B are zero and one respectively, Boolean AND is gonna return a zero. If it's one and zero, then Boolean AND is gonna return a zero. And if it's one and one, Boolean AND is gonna return a one. So the only time that Boolean AND returns a one is when both of the inputs are one. Okay, but that's a truth table. Yeah, pretty easy to read, really. Okay, so if we come down here to our little test function and we say mov eax and some random value, and I'll put a b on the end, and mov ecx, some equally random value. Um, if you want to make a binary constant in massum or assembly, you just got to put a b on the end. Okay, so we'll perform our and and we'll see what happens. Let's give it a bit of a run, a bit of an f5 and see what happens. Okay, there we go. So let's just grab this and we'll hit a bit of an enter. Hopefully that's copied it. Okay, there we go. So this is the result in EAX. Well, first of all, the Boolean AND operation has been performed on all of the bits, uh, all of the corresponding bits. So the first two, this one just here in EAX and this zero in ECX, the computer's gonna look up one zero is zero. So it puts a zero there. The next two are both one in EAX and ECX. So the result of one one is one. Yeah, so we pick any of these random values. We've got one and zero over here, that results in a zero. Uh, we got zero and zero results in a zero. Yeah, you can pretty much see all of it uh, happening. So really the computer doesn't perform one Boolean and, it performs 32 of them. If your operands are 32 bits wide. Yeah, if we were using like AX and CX, then it only would have done 16 of them. Nice and simple. So the next one that I want to talk about is OR. So the truth table for OR is that. Zero, one, one, one. So the only time that Boolean OR returns a zero is if both of the inputs are zero. So if we just get rid of this line just here, and we change this back to EAX and ECX, and we change this one to OR, we hit a bit of a run, we should be able to see a whole bunch of ones and, uh, and zeros, which is quite exciting. Okay, I've got the ASM dude add-on. That's what keeps popping up. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So if you hover over the instructions and things with ASM dude installed, it'll tell you a whole bunch of stuff about the um, instructions. Anyway, this is the result just here of Boolean ORing EAX and ECX. And what you'll see is that it's, it's pretty much done the same thing as, as before, except it's a different operation. So one or zero gives you one. If you look up the truth table, that's this row just here. One or zero gives you one. Uh, zero or zero gives you zero. One or one gives you one. Yeah, etc. etc. Yeah, so that's Boolean OR. Pretty useful. All right, so Boolean NOT is super simple. We only need one value for Boolean NOT. Uh, we'll just NOT EAX just here. So this is um, going to flip all of the bits or give us the ones complement, it's sometimes called. Let's have a look. Yeah, there we go. So all of the ones now have become zero and all of the zeros have become one. Yeah, fair enough, Boolean NOT. Nice and simple. So that's actually all of the uh, original proper Boolean logic instructions, and or and not.
Uh, but there's other ones that are really, really useful to be able to do quickly. So let's have a look at some of those. Probably the most famous or the most useful, the most used, I'd say. It's not necessarily the most useful. Uh, it's XOR or exclusive or, yeah, or the hat. If you're in C++, it's a hat. They call that a hat, I guess, because it looks like a hat. Weird. It's clever. <laughs> okay, so the truth table for X or is that. Zero, one, one, zero. And what's interesting about that is that's actually the same as saying, are the two not equal? Yeah, so zero, zero, um, those two are equal. Zero is equal to zero. So the answer is no, zero. Zero, one, those two are not equal. So XOR will give you a one. Yeah, XOR returns one wherever the two inputs are not equal. Um, let's just hit run and see what happens. I hit F10. <laughs> Tell everyone what I are. All right, so here's the result of our X or what you'll see is now there's a one in the result wherever the two inputs were not equal. This is quite useful, very useful actually. Uh, one does not equal zero, so X or is going to give us a one. One equals one, so X or is going to give us a zero. Yeah, etc. etc. So the only times that X or gives us a one are where the two inputs are not equal. Cool. Um, really, really useful. You might, you might know this trick, X or EAX, EAX. What's that going to do? Where does a number not equal itself? Uh, nowhere. That's where. Okay. <laughs> okay. So that's X or not equals to. So it's interesting, but if you want equals to, this is quite a neglected operation, but if you want equals to the opposite of X or, all you've got to do is not the result. So this is the equals to operation, sometimes called X nor. And I should say at this point that we've jumped into something that's not really beginner's Boolean algebra. We're kind of, if you not the result of an X or you get equals to. So let's do that. Um, ECX. Okay, so we've got EAX, ECX. We're XORing them together. Then we're knotting the result or we're flipping all of the bits. And the not of not equals is equals to. Strange. X nor. There you go. There you go. Okay, so now in our answer, we've got zero wherever the two were not equal, and we've got ones wherever they were equal. So one does not equal zero, so we get a zero. One equals one, so we get a one. Yeah, it's pretty cool, really. So the only times we get um, zeros here are where the two inputs are not equal. Yeah, so that's X nor, or, or the, the equals operation. It's strange that X or gets all of the limelight and X nor is kind of left out. There's a whole bunch of these regular bitwise instructions that just get left out. Uh, X, or, X, X nor gets no love. Let's move on from X nor. Let's talk about nor. Here we go. Okay, so nor is not or. Um, so first of all, if we write out the 90, if we randomly write out 90 in our truth table. <laughs> so that's the or truth table just there. So the nor truth table just, I'm saying this, nor, uh, is the opposite. Yeah, just like that. What do we just say? It's or, E-A-X, E-C-X, and then not the result. Yeah, so this will give us a nor. Let's have a look. Wacky, wacky nor. Wacky nor. There you go. So that's a pretty wacky result from wacky nor. Okay, so the only time it gives us a zero is if both of the inputs are zero. That's nor. Uh, but the final one I want to have a look at today is NAND, the NAND gate, or the not AND gate. Would you believe it? Let's go NAND. Well, you just can't write NAND. You just can't write NAND somewhere. People aren't going to understand you. Anyway, NAND is the result of notting uh, an AND. Now, if we have a look at the truth table, NAND. Uh, there we go. So, so, so AND was that. AND gives you one where both of the inputs are one. NAND will give you the opposite. So it's going to give you a zero where both of the inputs are one and a one otherwise. Just hit run and see what happens. Nice. Well NANDed. Well NANDed CPU. It NANDed those numbers together so, so beautifully. All right. One NAND zero. One NAND zero gives you a one. Uh, one NAND one gives you a zero. Uh... <laughs> Zero NAND zero gives you a one. The interesting thing about NAND is that it's universal. So you actually don't need anything other than NAND gates and you can compute anything at all. Absolute spin out. I'll show you. This is really, really bizarre. This is bizarre. And it's useful to know too. So 
Useful for who? Let's just keep moving on. Okay, so I'm going to say um, and EAX, and then I'm going to write NEEKS for some reason, and then we're going to not the answer. Okay, so this is a NAND gate. I mean, you need two instructions in this um, you know, language that I'm using here, but usually a NAND gate, you could just write NAND, but you know, we haven't got that uh, ability. Get rid of that comma. Okay, so this is a NAND just here, and what happens if you NAND the same value? Okay, so this is a little bit, little bit strange, but let's see what happens. Let's see what happens if we NAND EAX with itself. I'm going to copy the result and we hit stop. Okay, so the result of NANDing something with itself is... Would you look at that? It's the same as NOT. If you NAND a number with itself, you get the ones complement or the NOT of it. Um, so another example gate that we can make with NAND, uh, if we get our ECX back again, um, we'll just move some random value into ECX. Okay, now we're going to make... Um, we're going to make another gate with NAND. So we'll go uh, AND ECX ECX and NOT ECX. And then we're going to AND EAX ECX and NOT EAX. Honestly, you would never do this. You would never do this in regular assembly programming. But this is quite interesting. So right here, I've, I've NANDed EAX with itself. And then I've NANDed ECX with itself. And then I've NANDed those two results together. It's, if we hit run, we should see something pretty interesting. I don't know. It's ones and zeros. It doesn't look interesting. Let's see. <laughs> okay, no, it is interesting. So what we've got here is a failure to communicate. One or zero gives you one. One or one gives you one. Zero or one gives you one. Zero or zero gives you zero. What you'll see if you read along that whole row there is that we've actually duplicated the exact uh, return value of an OR gate. So using nothing but NAND gates, you can make every other gate. In fact, you can program everything. You could program the whole Windows operating system with nothing but NAND gates. You'd have to be crazy, though. You'd have to be crazy. Um, the other thing I want to say is that NAND gets all of the limelight, but it's not the only universal gate. Uh, NOR is also universal, so you can do the same thing with NOR. Uh, if you're interested in having a bit of a crack at figuring out how to make the other gates, uh, it's an interesting operation to try and make the XOR gate with nothing but NAND, um, to try and make you know, the equals gate or the XNOR gate with nothing but NANDs. And it seems fairly pointless to make all of the gates with NAND when you could just use the other gates. But actually what happens is on a CPU, when your printing dies, as you often will be, <laughs> um, it's easier to use nothing but NAND to make all of the logical gates. So yeah, CPU manufacturers love NAND. They love NAND because it simplifies their circuitry that they can just keep using the same gate over and over again. Anyway, that is all of the Boolean instructions and a whole lot more information on binary and Boolean that you probably didn't want to know. <laughs> but I just want to say that um, thank you very much to all of my Patreon supporters. Uh, it's, it's a, you know, it means a lot to me. It's really good of you. And cheers for that. And also thank you for all of the people that leave really nice comments. So, I'm, yeah, it's, it, it makes my day, really, to get a nice comment uh, on one of my videos. Anyway, cheers for watching. Have a good one.